I want to talk about the concept of theoretical spot rates. Now, in a previous tutorial, I talked about the term structure of interest rates in a rather simplified manner. And what we usually assume is that we're looking at treasury securities because they're default free and there's no real liquidity problem for selling them. And we usually just look at the different yields to maturity and the term to maturity for these different securities and we plot them. But that's not technically correct. Uh, the technically correct way is to produce the theoretical spot rate. And the way to think of a bond is not as a bond, but as a series of cash flows. And each cash flow should be discounted back by its appropriate interest rate, or this theoretical spot rate. In the past, we've always valued bonds by discounting them by the same interest rate. So we say the yield to maturity is, is for example, for a three-year bond, I'm sorry, for a, a three-year bond, okay, six periods, these are half-year periods, you know, we would use, for example, six and a half percent to calculate the present value of each cash flow. But that's not correct. We should think of each cash flow as that the bond receives as a separate cash flow or as its own zero coupon bond and each one of those cash flows should be discounted by discounted back by its appropriate interest rate so over here I have again uh, 20 periods 20 half year periods or 10 years and I have the yield to maturity for a bunch of bonds that we're going to assume are selling at their par value of hundred dollars so therefore this is the case where the coupon rate is also equal to the yield to maturity. I also have over here the theoretical spot rate, and I'm going to compute one or two of these, and then you can just look at the rest of the table uh, to see the rest of them calculated. So let's look at how we calculate this. Okay, for example, if you have a three-year bond, I'm sorry, a three-period bond, what's the cash flow going to be? Well, the cash flow is going to be for the first half year, it's going to be 0 0.0575 times 100, but that would be the annual coupon times 0.5, and that's going to be $2.87 and a half cents. The one year cash flow will be the same coupon, 0 0.0575 times 100 times 0 0.5, which is also going to be the same, 2.875. And the final cash flow will be 0 0.0575, so the coupon times 100 times 0 0.5, okay, plus you get back the par value, so it's going to be 102.8. Seven, five. So the present value equation is this. It's going to be 2.875 divided by 1 plus, and we're going to call these theoretical spot rates Z, Z1 for the first spot rate, plus 2.875 divided by 1 plus Z2, that's the spot rate for the second cash flow, squared, and then the final cash flow is 102.875, and we're going to discount that by 1 plus Z3 to the third power. So you'll notice that each one of these cash flows is discounted by its own interest rate. Now it turns out that we already know Z1 and Z2 because the first six-month security is a treasury bill that's already a zero coupon bond. So we can take half of its yield to maturity and that will be its spot rate. We can also, we also know the second period cash flow, the one-year treasury bill, okay, again a zero coupon security, so we take its yield to maturity and we divide it by two and we get that six-month rate and then we just want to solve for Z3. Since we've assumed that the bonds are selling for 
uh, the bond is selling for $100 par value and that the price is currently $100, that'll give us an equation of 2.875 divided by 1.02625 right that being this five and a quarter percent divided by two plus two point eight seven five divided by the appropriate interest rate for the uh, period two cash flows and that's going to be five point five divided by two so that's going to be you know when we add one to it one point oh two seven five squared and then our last cash flow of 102.875 is divided by 1 plus z3 raised to the third power and so we just want to solve for z3 okay so if you work through the math here we get 100 equals 2.8 O one four six six one plus two point seven two three one sixty six okay plus one oh two point eight seven five divided by one plus Z three raised to the third power. Okay. And you can just verify. I'll just verify one of these. So if I take 2.875 and I divide it by 1.02625, I in fact do get 2.801461, etc. Okay. So if we do, if we, what we want to do is we want to solve for Z3. And so we can subtract these two numbers from both sides of the equation. So we're going to get 94.47537 equals 102.875 divided by 1 plus z3 raised to the third power and then we're going to multiply both sides by one, uh, 1 plus z3 to the third power to get that out of here. That'll cancel this and bring it over here. And divide both sides by 94.47537. So if we do that, we're going to have 1 plus z3 cubed equals 102.875 divided by 94.47537. And if you do that division, you're going to get 1.088908. So in order to get rid of the 3 here, we're going to take that number and we're going to raise it to the one-third power. If we raise this to the one-third power, this will cancel and we'll get one point, let's see, 1.088908. We're going to raise it to a power and I'm going to use the parenthesis. I haven't used it much in my other tutorials, but it does come in handy. One divided by three, close up the parenthesis so you get the point three three three. Right, and hit equals and what do we get we get that that equals we get one plus z3 equals 1.028 let's round off okay and if we subtract one from both sides we're going to get that Z3 is equal to 0 0.028 All right, so I'll subtract 1 from both sides. And if we multiply it by 2, remember this is a semi-annual rate. If we multiply it by 2, we get 0 0.05759. And if I scroll back up here, let me 
see here. Where am I? I scroll back up here, you can see that the calculated theoretical spot rate is 5.76%. To do the fourth period one, we would do exactly the same thing. We would say, okay, our cash flow is going to be $3 each period, so it would look like this. Okay, so if we wanted to solve for Z4, we would have 100 equals $3 is the first cash flow divided by 1 plus Z1 plus $3 divided by 1 plus Z2 squared plus $3 divided by 1 plus Z3 cubed plus 103 divided by 1 plus z4 raised to the fourth power. Now we know what z1 is. It's the z1 we used last time. We know what z2 is. It's the z2 we used last time, right? It was these numbers here, which were half of the yield to maturity because that was the theoretical spot rate and we just solved for Z3 so let me just write that down here I'm going to get 3 divided by 1.02625 plus three dollars divided by 1.0 to 75 squared plus three dollars divided by 1.028 I don't know seven I guess we could say eight 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 and just round off cubed that's what we solved right here plus 103 divided by 1 plus z4 raised to the fourth power. And then we'll just solve for z4 the same way we solved for z3. We'll figure out what these are, and then we'll solve for z4, and then we'll do that for the fifth one, the sixth one, etc. And when we do all of that, we will get these numbers as the theoretical spot rates. And you just keep doing it. It's kind of tedious but you just keep doing that and that gives you the appropriate spot rate to use in your uh, plot of the yield curve.